According to Forbes.com, a recession is a significant decline in economic activity that lasts for months or even years. Experts declare a recession when a nation's economy experiences negative gross domestic product, GDP, rising levels of unemployment, falling retail sales, and contracting measures of income and manufacturing for an extended period of time. Putting it bluntly, people lose work, pensions are lost, businesses make fewer sales, and the economy struggles. What causes a recession? Recessions are typically caused by excessive debt and too much inflation, which is about where we're at right now. How long does a recession last? According to the National Bureau of Economic Research, from 1945 to 2009, the average recession lasts 11 months. Although it's difficult to predict a recession or financial collapse of any kind, there are measures you can take right now to prepare you and your construction business. For this video, we've spoken to dozens of contractors, equipment suppliers, and even economists to bring you and your business 25 crucial tips, not just to weather out the storm, but thrive. Here's a quick disclaimer. Regarding the following tips, each is obviously more effective if implemented before a recession. And that being said, some tips will take the perspective during a recession as the average contractor tends to find themselves in the middle of these financial dark times before they even know what hit them. In addition, yes, of course, most of these tips should be executed on a regular basis, we know. But if this is the obvious case, then why are most construction businesses not already taking these actions? All things considered, there is a common denominator found within all these tips, and it's a tip. Better yet, a code to live by that we love to mention in every video. Work your butt off. Number one, assess your current financial status. When a recession strikes, you should immediately review your current financial status. Start by conducting a comprehensive assessment of your business. Take a close look at your books and figure out how much money you have on hand, what your cash outflow and inflow looks like, and what your project timelines and deadlines are. Also, you may want to take a look at your supply chain. Do you have suppliers that are located in regions that are vulnerable to economic failure? Take the COVID crisis, for example. Consider how it was difficult and still is difficult to get certain materials in some areas of the United States. For those of you asking, shouldn't I be doing this already on a regular basis? You betcha. Second, have a plan of action. Contingency plans are ideal to have ready for any kind of emergency, whether it's a natural disaster, a medical emergency, or of course, a financial collapse. What exactly is a contingency plan? Well, a contingency plan is a course of action designed to help a construction business respond efficiently to unfortunate and often unforeseen events. Take the amount of construction jobs available, for example. Consider how many times you've heard politicians debate over the infrastructure budget and job market. Unfortunately, some of those public servants, they don't even think twice about misappropriating that precious budget or even slashing it entirely, which means, you guessed it, less work for us. What's your plan for when this happens? Your contingency plan should include step-by-step -step guidelines to address how exactly your construction business will respond to a financial collapse. These guidelines might include a headcount and staff changes, selling material that's lying around the yard, canceling loans on equipment that isn't being used enough, and regarding marketing, and most amateurs out there would tell you to cut it out. However, a savvy construction business owner will take a careful look at their marketing and consider how they can cleverly adjust their strategy for a smaller budget. And when you've finished your contingency plan, don't forget to share it with the right people within your circle. Your entire team needs to be prepared. 
Number three is act quickly. If the economy takes a dive, you certainly don't want to make impulsive and reckless decisions. However, it's important that you don't procrastinate, as this can have costly consequences. If half of your upcoming jobs are canceled and your income's cut in half, the sooner you act, the better. Maybe you need to cancel some equipment leases. Maybe you need to make some temporary pay cuts. Every month, every week, every day, every hour is costing you money. You can't afford to waste time. When you're forced into a situation where important quick decisions have to be made, it's always ideal to have a meeting with your key decision makers. Talk these things out. It keeps people from acting rashly and making, well, otherwise stupid decisions that they shouldn't be making. Working together as a team and remember, and this is most important, don't ever react. Always respond. Four is investing in insurance. There's no insurance policy out there that will protect you from an economic collapse completely. That being said, the last thing you need is to pay out of pocket for an accident on the job site or a disgruntled employee who's out to sue you. We know it's tempting to nix insurance and save that extra cash every month, but you better be more safe than sorry and keep your insurance. Or at the very least, take time to go over your policies with a fine tooth comb. Most of the time, we find that contractors aren't necessarily paying too much money for insurance, but they're paying for the wrong coverage. Maybe there's a more suitable and even cheaper policy out there that'll better serve your construction business. Be sure to review your policy with your agent and even get quotes from other companies. Number five is looking for new business opportunities. Now, a recession, it's not the time to take significant risk, at least for most contractors. You should always have your eyes peeled for profitable opportunities, though. Consider how entrepreneurs have made millions during the hardest of times, and there's plenty of data to support that. As we talked about in our video, building a multi-million dollar construction business, the ultimate guide for contractors. Our good friend had his most profitable year after Hurricane Francis and Jean when he converted his landscape business into a debris removal business. He traded his moors for grapples and other debris removal equipment. When times get tough, who are you gonna be? The guy who sells his equipment fleet and goes on unemployment, or the guy who doesn't make excuses and gets resourceful? Remember that although the problem seems like a lack of resources, the true issue is actually a lack of resourcefulness. Six is be wise with your financing and loans. Now we've all got different financial situations. Some of us already have active loans, some of us don't. Some of us refuse to ever take a loan and some of us are planning to get one in the near future. But whatever the case may be, just remember getting a loan during a recession can be challenging and even impossible for some construction business owners. For that reason, it's a good idea to plan ahead. Will you need a new piece of equipment several months from now? How about more inventory of certain material or even construction for a new warehouse or garage for your business? If so, you may wanna lock in that solid interest rate now because believe me, you don't wanna pay those ridiculous rates when times get tough and you're desperate. On a final note about financing and loans, the US Small Business Administration offers some helpful financial resources like microloans for small construction businesses. Number seven is hold strategic planning meetings. Now we know you think you're smart, but two heads are always more productive than one. Well, most of the time anyway. When a recession hits or any issue for that matter, a strategic planning meeting should be your go-to reaction. Get together with your partners, maybe even your employees if it's appropriate and start making a list of potential challenges you see coming down the road ahead. What's next? And you guessed it, start brainstorming those solutions. When it comes to strategizing and meetings, reviewing your backlog is essential. Are there any jobs to pursue that have better margins? Maybe you want to temporarily or even permanently focus on a different niche. We'll touch on this a little later on. Remember, a problem discussed is a problem cut in half. 
When times are tough, there's nothing worse than resentment that festers. And this resentment only leads to blow-ups. But, of course, you don't need to wait until an argument to hold a meeting and start talking solutions. Number eight, monitor policy changes and economic projections. Now we're gonna assume that most of you would like to spend the majority of your time actually working on a project. We get it, believe me. But part of running a successful construction business entails research and keeping up with current events. And we can assure you that your competitors are doing this and if they aren't, well, here's your opportunity to get ahead. Recently, a popular topic has been the White House infrastructure bill. Now, maybe you wanna take a peek at it and see if it's really gonna affect you. Also, consider government aid like tax relief and economic impact payments. At this moment, it looks like they might be coming to an end. Does this mean fewer contracting jobs? Number nine, cash, cash, cash. One of the most fundamental and important rules of survival is certainly applicable to running a construction business. Keep cash handy. During a financial collapse, cash will take you far. Whether you're renting a piece of equipment, buying material, hiring an employee, consider how a vendor will be more willing to negotiate when you have cash. Projecting cash flow is just as important. And with the abundance of financial software out there that will do the heavy lifting for you, no pun intended, there's no excuse. Don't be lazy because covering your operating and overhead costs are essential to keep your construction business thriving during a recession. Number 10, become margin driven. Now let's quickly go over the basics of profit margins. A profit margin is the difference between the sale price of the product and the cost of making the product. When a construction business consistently sells products with little profit, that's a low margin business. A high margin construction business will acquire products at a low price and has the ability to sell them at a marked up price for greater profit. High margins are good, especially during a recession. Now, if you disagree, and there's always somebody, feel free to comment why below. If your margins are low, do you need to drop everything and quit your business? No, of course not. But maybe there's some clever margin management that you can pull off, like working with a more affordable, efficient subcontractor. Maybe you can find cheaper material from a different vendor, or like we mentioned before, maybe renting equipment versus owning might improve your margins. Maybe that guy Darwin was onto something when he said, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It is the one most adaptable to change. Number 11, take a closer look at your contracts and service agreements. Someone also said, and we're not sure who, the devil is in the details. Well, it's important to take a close look at those contracts and service agreements to see if you and your construction business can operate more effectively. Let's look for the following terms and factors. Scope of work. What exactly is expected of the contractor? Indemnities, which are obligations for one party to compensate the other for things like damage, loss, and expenses. Liquidated damages the compensation you may have to pay if the project's not completed on time. Reasonably and fairable. Will the project owner claim the design isn't up to par? Incorporation clauses. A subcontractor can be bound to the provisions of the prime contract between the general contractor and the owner. Now these are just a few, and there are of course many more factors to consider when reviewing a contract, which we'll be reviewing that in another video. Have you made mistakes with contracts in the past? Well, that's good. Learn from those mistakes. Get stronger, get smarter, so you can even be more efficient during the inevitable hard times coming ahead. Number 12 is know your target market. You can't afford to waste any time pursuing prospects that aren't going to pay off, especially in the middle of a financial collapse. We know that most of you can already answer this question, but who are you targeting for business and why? 
We're surprised each time we ask a client or someone who's looking for help, what's your target market? And they go, well, um, hey, going after new business requires valuable time and energy. So get very clear about what you want. The more precise you are, the more results you're going to see. And what exactly are you offering these prospects? It's crucial to know what your potential customers are looking for in a contractor and what issues they need or want solved. We couldn't agree more with Mark Cuban when he said the greatest value you offer a client is to reduce their stress. If the service you're offering can solve a client's problem and reduce the amount of stress on their plate, they will want to work with you. It's that simple. There's no sponsor for this video. We just ask that you help us out by crushing that like button and giving us some comments below. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. We greatly appreciate your support. Number 13 is be careful with backlogs. In case any greenhorns out there aren't sure what a backlog is, a backlog is the amount of work measured in dollars that a contractor is contracted to do in the future. The more value the backlog manifests, the more comfortable a contractor can be with their current finances and financial decisions. While a strong backlog is a good indicator of a healthy construction company, during an economic crisis, be careful to not rely too much on your backlog, as the chances of a project being delayed or even canceled has now dramatically increased. So what can you do about it? Well, hopefully this galvanizes you to take even more action. Get hungry. If you chase hard enough after a few jobs, you won't need to worry as much about a delayed or canceled job on a backlog. And remember, best construction companies never stop moving their feet. They never stop taking action. 14. Use technology to your advantage. We really like Tony Robbins' definition of business efficiency, maximizing your outputs from your given inputs or making the most of your resources. If you haven't thought about how to improve efficiency in a business, you may well be overlooking places where you can cut down on the time you're spending on a particular task. One of the most important objectives, if not the most important objective of any construction business is to be as efficient as possible. Putting it bluntly, you want to make the most amount of money with the least amount of effort while, of course, behaving ethically and producing the highest quality of work possible for your client. And one of the most crucial and effective ways to improve business efficiency is with technology. These days, there's plenty of software out there that can improve the productivity of your construction business with features like project management, employee management, streamlining bidding, estimating tools, warranty and punch list and to-do list, and the list goes on and on. It's great that you're working hard, but also remember, work smart. Take advantage of technology and improve efficiency of your construction business. During a recession, your business depends on it. 15. Anticipate lost profits. The best contractors are constantly reviewing P&L, searching for any sign of profit loss. And that's during a stable economy. Well, take into consideration that even these contractors who are regularly doing their due diligence will most likely struggle during a financial collapse. Now consider the typical contractor who rarely checks for those signs of loss of profit. They won't stand a chance. Here are the most common reasons a construction business loses profit. Poor hiring decisions. Weak employee management. Lack of a business strategy. Underbidding projects. Sloppy bookkeeping. Spending too much money. When it comes to lost profits, the most important thing to keep in mind is this, anticipate. It's easier to plug a hole in the dike when the hole is still small. 16. 
reduce debt, and cut the fat. We know that some of you are currently operating your construction business with debt, and we understand that some of the debt out there is considered good debt. But during, or better yet before a recession, you need to be very, very careful with debt. For those of you in need of a loan during a financial crisis, and you plan to manage the debt responsibly, remember that your chances of obtaining a loan without any current debt are far greater. So it's always wise to be debt free until you really, really need it. But most of you who are looking to cut back and avoid debt at all cost, here's some things you should consider. Are you taking on too many projects? Do you have equipment sitting around or employees that aren't pulling their weight? Could you be cost estimating your jobs in a more efficient way? Can you renegotiate and possibly even restructure loans with existing lenders? Are there any creative payment resolutions or alternatives, such as bartering services or materials that you could discuss with your vendors or clients? Have you maximized your pledged assets to ensure you're receiving full credit with your bank? On a final note about debt, just remember this. It's easier to not spend a thousand than to make a thousand. Number 17, put processes in place to help you get paid faster. When it comes to getting paid faster or even paid on time, we find that most contractors are just too lazy or afraid to put a process in place to ensure prompt payment. When you've got employees to pay, material to buy, you can't be lazy or paralyzed by fear. Let's take a quick look at how fear plays a role in a recession. During a financial collapse, people get fearful. And when people get fearful, they get desperate. And desperate people do desperate things like refuse to pay vendors and suppliers. And most of us already know what it feels like when a client doesn't pay. Doesn't feel good, does it? For this reason, you need to be even more vigilant than usual during a recession. And we can assure you, it will pay off. If you haven't already, be sure to use invoicing software that automatically sends invoice follow-ups. As some of you are already aware, some clients tend to ignore an invoice when it lands in the inbox. You need all the help you can get. 18. Invest in your workforce. When the chips are down, you need to be able to depend on your employees. If we haven't established this by now, you can't do this alone. We understand that it's hard to make payroll when the bank account is looking sorry and scary, but it's a rookie maneuver to neglect your employees. Remember, they've got mouths to feed too. If you don't already know who they are, find out who your strongest and most reliable employees are and take care of them. Whether this means you increase their salary or you buy them a gift, whatever the incentive may be, keep them happy. There's already a labor shortage in the construction industry, and we can assure you, it will not improve during a recession. 19. Know your operating cost and keep them low. Unless you've been living on the moon the last 24 months, you've noticed material and labor costs have really increased. Heck, some of us can't even find a plumber or handyman to fix something around the house these days. While projects are becoming more complex with shorter timelines, profit margins are becoming pretty thin. And it doesn't look like it's going to get better anytime soon. What can you do about this? At the very least, you should have a thorough understanding of what your operating costs are. These costs might include raw material, equipment rental, labor costs, etc. But whatever they may be, you won't be able to manage and adjust these costs unless you understand them. Knowing is half the battle. And with so many options available for construction management and accounting software, there's no excuse for not keeping your operating costs low or at least being aware of them. 20. Overhead cost and productivity. While you should remain vigilantly aware of operating cost, 
it's equally important to manage your construction company's overhead cost. Overhead expenses are costs not related to raw material and equipment rentals. Instead, overhead pertains more to insurance, office staff, vehicles, other expenses necessary to run your business. While you can't get rid of overhead entirely, there are three areas of your business where you might be able to make adjustments. Bidding, accounts receivable, and accounts payable. Use an estimating program to calculate your material needs and organize your bid files at the same time. File your taxes, workers' comp, and unemployment insurance via the internet. Use an online payroll service to do your payroll needs. This may take some time, but streamlining these tedious, necessary tasks will ultimately add more hours to your day. Number 21 is play to your strengths. During a recession, people change, the market changes, the industry changes, and oftentimes it's necessary for you to change too. This may entail reconsidering your niche and leveraging your strengths, strengths that you may or may not have realized you have. Now, as corny as this sounds, now is a good time to look within yourself. What do you want? What are you good at? What are you not good at? Or how about what have you always wanted to do? In the past, maybe you were passionate about a certain career or niche, but you never took time to pursue it. Maybe you made a living building swimming pools, and because of the recession, the work is gone or it's slowed dramatically. So why not focus on landscaping or a maintenance business that you've always wanted to try? Whatever lies down the road ahead, try to stay open-minded and honest with yourself. Things just seem to work out better that way. 22. Negotiate wisely. Although we may be entering times of survival, be very careful with survival bidding. Yes, you need the work and the client probably understands this, but if you're underbidding every project, you put yourself at serious risk of losing money, and that's money you can't afford to lose. But at the same time, don't let a client hold you hostage. You're running a business and paying employees, and your client needs to respect that, whether they want to or not. Stand your ground, don't be a doormat. This is what separates the men from the boys or the girls from the women. You might step on some toes, you might hurt some feelings. If this bothers you, just remind yourself, you've got mouths to feed. When it comes to negotiating, it's pivotal that you find some sort of harmonious balance that works for you and your construction business strategy. Number 23, improve estimate accuracy. Becoming a skilled construction cost estimator is a talent that can take you far, especially during a recession. A solid estimator must be experienced, knowledgeable, accurate, methodical. Poor estimating practices result in under and overbidding, both of which can have dire consequences. And add in a financial crisis, you have a recipe for disaster. We'll discuss more about estimating in a different video, but for now, take some time to sharpen the ax. You can start by reviewing prior projects. Compare what you estimated to what you actually spent on each project. What could you have done differently? How can you improve the accuracy of your next estimate? 24. Have an emergency fund. Ask any financial planner and they'll tell you the same thing. Having an emergency fund in place is one of the best things you can do for you and your construction business. An emergency fund is essential during a recession. What if you need a few hundred extra bucks to cover the cost of a material? Or what if your most important excavator breaks down and you need cash to buy a spare part? You never know what you'll need extra cash for. When it comes to emergencies, expect the unexpected. As Murphy's Law says, if anything can go wrong, it will. 25. Make an emergency checklist. Emergency checklists aren't only necessary for a natural disaster and a serious injury, but they're imperative for a financial crisis as well. For example, how are you going to handle the loss of key personnel, 
labor disputes, or material delivery delays. These situations not only threaten your revenue, but can hurt your reputation as well. It doesn't look too good when that lumber you ordered doesn't arrive on time for a client's project. Most of us have already experienced those crises on a minor everyday scenario, so imagine these challenges on a national scale during a recession. It's not pretty. Remember once again what we said about Murphy's Law. If anything can go wrong, it will. So what should your checklist include? Your list for natural disasters and injuries might look a little different, but here's what we feel is essential for a recession. Backlog. Income from upcoming jobs is vital. Have you confirmed with the client the job's still on? Are you 100% sure the materials have arrived or will be arriving soon? Can you reduce the labor needed for that job? Are you and your team fully prepared for the job so there's no delays? Equipment fleet. Are you 100% positive you need every piece of equipment in your fleet? If not, why not sell it or rent it? Unused equipment sitting around the yard does you no good during a recession. Materials. Do you have unused materials sitting around the yard? Why not sell that steel sheet piling before it gets rained on again? Heck, hustling and selling used material around your yard might generate some solid income and increase your cash on hand today. Might even help that emergency fund. Personnel. What are you going to do if an employee quits or gets sick the day of the job? During a financial crisis, there's no room for mishaps like this, so you need a list of potential replacements right there on hand. Security. Theft is an issue to begin with, and it only will get worse in a recession. Materials will start to mysteriously disappear from job sites. Even large pieces of equipment have been driven off in the middle of the night. We recommend security cameras. Buy them now before you learn the hard way. Insurance. Do you have all of the necessary insurance? Have you reviewed your current insurance to make sure you've got the right coverage at the best price. Loans. Have you reviewed your current loans? Will you be able to afford them? Can you renegotiate with your lender? Attorneys. All smart construction business owners have a good attorney on speed dial. What if a client sues? What if an employee gets hurt? Or what if there's a contract discrepancy? And cash. Do you have cash handy for emergencies? Do you have some other checklist items to add? Hey, drop them in the comments below so everyone will know about it. Hard work never fails. And the bottom line is recessions are an inevitable part of the organic economic cycle. They always occur, and we're likely overdue for one right now. But don't panic. A little fear is healthy, but panicking accomplishes nothing. If anything, be grateful. The construction industry tends to perform pretty well during hard times. Many construction companies not only survived, but thrived during the COVID pandemic. Unfortunately, other businesses like restaurants, well, they weren't so lucky. But like we said in the beginning of the video, don't worry, you'll be fine. Just remember, to work your butt off.